In this video, we're going to compare the evidence suggesting whether or not cardio, meaning cardiorespiratory fitness, or muscle strength is superior for longevity. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. First off, it's evident that physical fitness in general is one of the best predictors of longer life and reduced mortality. Both cardiorespiratory fitness, which is measured by VO2 max, and muscle strength, which is usually assessed with grip strength, are linked to reduced risk of mortality and greater life expectancy. So obviously being either a more strength-focused athlete or being a more like an endurance athlete doesn't matter compared to being sedentary and not exercising at all, it's significantly better in terms of longevity. <laughs> But there are only a few studies that actually compare head to head the differences and which one is superior in terms of mortality risk when it comes to cardiorespiratory fitness, meaning your higher VO2 max and your muscle strength. One of the biggest studies actually comparing the two from UK, the combination cardiorespiratory fitness and muscle strength and mortality risk. They basically used the UK Biobank database and they got adults of over a half million of adults aged between 40 to 69 years of age. From this data pool, they took over 70,000 men and women. So here we have the results on this forest plot, essentially, and uh, they're measuring all cause mortality. If you're not aware of the hazard ratio, then hazard ratio of one is usually used in clinical trials to mean that there is no difference or there is no like significant difference between the two. And a hazard ratio of 1.5, for example, means that it's like a 50% higher risk of mortality in this scenario. So as you can see, the the uh, cardiorespiratory fitness, if you have low cardiorespiratory fitness and low grip strength at the same time, so you have low strength and low cardio, then that's a hazard ratio of one. If you have low strength, but middle or you know moderate cardiorespiratory fitness, then your hazard ratio is 0 0.62. So the lower the hazard ratio, then the lower your risk of mortality and the better it is. So 0 0.62 is still pretty good, that meaning that you have low strength and moderate cardiorespiratory fitness. It means that you have like 34% lower uh, risk of uh, mortality. If you have high cardiorespiratory fitness in the context of being low grip strength, then the hazard ratio of that is 0 0.58 meaning that it's 42% lower risk of all cause mortality. If, however, you have middle grip strength, so moderate grip strength and low cardiorespiratory fitness, then uh, your hazard ratio is 0 0.78, meaning that you experience around a 22% reduction in your mortality risk. If you have moderate cardiorespiratory fitness and moderate grip strength, then that's a hazard ratio of 0 0.67, meaning that it's 33% lower risk. If you have high cardiorespiratory fitness, and moderate grip strength, then your hazard ratio is 0 0.53, which means that it's 47% lower risk of all cause mortality. And lastly, we have high grip strength, so being very strong, but if you have low cardiorespiratory fitness, then the hazard ratio is 0 0.71, which means 29% reduction in uh, all cause mortality. If you have high grip strength, but moderate cardiorespiratory fitness, then the hazard ratio is 0 0.56, meaning that it's 44% uh, reduction. And lastly, the kind of the best of, you know, elite athlete in terms of that highest cardiorespiratory fitness and highest strength, 47% reduction. So actually, if you have moderate grip strength and but high cardiorespiratory fitness, then it's the same risk reduction compared to having high muscle strength and high cardiorespiratory fitness. So it appears that you peak out in terms of their mortality risk reduction benefits if you already peak at moderate grip strength. But when it comes to cardiorespiratory fitness, then the cardiorespiratory fitness significantly still provides you a greater reduction in mortality risk, uh, going from moderate to high cardiorespiratory fitness. Ooh, to recap, compared with the lowest cardiorespiratory fitness category, the hazard ratio for all cause mortality was 0 0.76 and 0 0.65 for the middle and highest cardiorespiratory fitness categories, respectively. The highest grip strength category had a hazard ratio of 0 0.79 for all cause mortality compared with the lowest. So the highest quartile of cardiorespiratory fitness outperformed the highest quartile of grip strength in terms of risk reduction, and even the middle cardiorespiratory fitness did better than high grip strength. So based on this study, having high cardiorespiratory fitness, meaning that you're in the top level of fitness with cardiorespiratory fitness, you have up to 14% lower risk reduction compared to being the highest with the grip strength.
So if you compare head to head things in isolation, you just compare your VO2 max and your grip strength, then the cardiorespiratory fitness appears to be much more important in terms of reducing your all cause mortality risk. But obviously the greatest reduction in your all cause mortality comes from having both high grip strength and high VO2 max. A combination of the highest cardiorespiratory fitness and the highest grip strength yielded a hazard ratio of 0.53 for all cause mortality and 0.31 for cardiovascular disease mortality compared to the lowest cardiorespiratory fitness and the lowest grip strength. So you can see that having the highest cardiorespiratory fitness and having the highest strength at the same time gives you the biggest reduction in your all cause mortality. And it is kind of the main message as well. You want to reach the highest level of cardiorespiratory fitness as possible for you and the highest strength as well at the same time but if you were to prioritize which one is like more important then it appears that the cardiorespiratory fitness is a little bit more important in terms of reducing the all cause mortality you want to just at least reach middle level of strength and after that, you don't see like exponential reduction in your risk of mortality. But going from middle cardiorespiratory fitness to high cardiorespiratory fitness does provide you some additional reductions in your mortality risk. I'm the party pooper. And this, I think, is one of the most powerful things in terms of longevity that you could do. Having low cardiorespiratory fitness is linked to a four times higher risk of all cause mortality compared to having high cardiorespiratory fitness. Smoking typically increases your mortality risk by two to three times but having low cardiorespiratory fitness increases your mortality risk by four times which means that being unfit being with poor cardio is almost as bad as smoking for you a 2022 study saw that being extremely fit was categorized as having 14 mets so based on this 2022 study the lowest risk of mortality is at 14 mets which in vo2 max is about 49 milliliters per kilogram per minute and that appears to be like the cutoff point that you want to reach for like the maximum longevity benefits in terms of your vo2 max you want to have a vo2 max of at least 50 just lifting weights and doing no cardio probably isn't enough to reach the 50 vo2 max limit that you want to reach now if you're untrained you've never trained then your vo2 max will increase if you just start lifting weights we have research showing that doing resistance training does increase vo2 max in the elderly who are untrained but that's just because of becoming fitter but if you're already lifting weights and you've adapted to it then you're not going to see like additional benefits in terms of increasing your VO2 max from just resistance training. You need to incorporate some interval work as well as zone 2 cardio. And I still want to emphasize this point, being unfit, having poor cardio and having low VO2 max is as bad for you as smoking. There is no supplement, there is no diet, there is no food that reduces your mortality risk more than having high VO2 max. Boosting your VO2 max and working on your cardiorespiratory fitness based on multiple studies, based on the evidence, the current evidence that we have, is the single most powerful thing you can do to reduce your all-cause mortality risk and promote longevity. So in conclusion, both high strength as well as high cardiorespiratory fitness are both beneficial for reducing all-cause mortality and promoting longevity. But if you compare them head to head, then cardio is significantly more powerful. Ideally, you obviously want to do both. You want to have high cardiorespiratory fitness and high strength at the same time. But you should definitely not neglect cardio because the cardio actually gives you a lot bigger reduction. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.